Hello everybody! This video will tell you what to do if a program on your laptop or desktop computer doesn't start. There can be lots of reasons why programs no longer start to work properly. Unfortunately, many of them are exclusively specific and relate to certain program and technical aspects of a certain application, and they can require various approaches if you want to restore their normal work. In this video, we will show you what to do if an antivirus blocks the program. The program is blocked by Windows Smart Screen. The program is blocked by your browser security system. The program doesn't start, but this process is represented in the Task Manager. You need administrator rights to run a program. The program can't start because of compatibility issues. A Net Framework component is missing. A Microsoft Visual C++ component is missing. An up-to-date DirectX is missing. The program or game can't start because a DLL file is missing. However, before you do it, please remember that you choose to run blocked applications at your own risk. They may damage your data or your system. If your antivirus blocks a program while it is downloaded, installed or started and doesn't let it work properly, there is nothing to be afraid of. It's ok. Often a program containing no virus still makes the antivirus react and block it. In this case, open the antivirus, in our case, he said Node32, and disable it for the time of installation. To do it, go to Setup, Computer Protection, Pose Antivirus and Anti-Spyware Protection. Set the time interval to pause the antivirus and then click Apply. When this time interval is over, the antivirus will start again, but the program you couldn't start will keep on working. If the antivirus blocks an already installed program all the time, you can send this program to the exclusion list. To do it, go to Setup, Advanced Setup, Antivirus. Find the line Exclusions, Edit, Add. In the field Exclude for Path, specify the folder with the application that is constantly blocked. OK. Now the antivirus should not block and prevent your application from starting or, un or installing. For other antiviruses, the steps should be similar. Windows has a built-in filter that prevents suspicious programs from starting on the computer. It is called Smart Screen. Often, this filter is the thing that prevents a program from starting. Sometimes its reactions can be false alarms, and sometimes you just have to start a program no matter where it comes from. In this case, you may need to disable the Smart Screen. There are several ways to disable Smart Screen, but they may differ for various versions and builds of Windows. It can be Windows Defender Security Center in Creators Update build or Local Good Policy Editor for Windows Pro or Enterprise. Let's have a look at the method, which is common for all versions and builds of Windows – disabling Smart Screen with the Registry Editor. To do it, run Registry Editor, go to the string H key, Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows, Current Version, Explorer. Find the value Smart Screen enabled and double-click on it. It can have one of the following value data. Require admin – require administrator's confirmation. Prompt – request user's confirmation. Off – disable. Set this value to off, click OK, and changes will take effect after the system restart. If this string has no value named Smart Screen enabled, you should create it and set its value data to off. To do it, right-click on the Explorer string, select New string value, assign the name Smart Screen Enabled, and set this value data to OFF. Click OK. Don't forget to restart the computer. After that, the Smart Screen for applications and files from the Internet will be disabled. 
The program can also be blocked by your browser security system. Talking of Microsoft Edge, it has also got smart screen. To show how it works, we will use a demonstration page that Microsoft provides for Edge. Find the link in the description. When you try to run an unknown application from the browser or an application known as malware, Edge won't let it run and will show you one of the following warning messages. If you are sure you want to run such an application, you will have to disable Smart Screen in Edge. To do it, go to the menu – Settings – Advanced Settings. In the line Help protect me from malicious sites and downloads with Smart Screen filter, set the slider to Off position. After that, Edge will not prevent you from running suspicious programs and web pages. All popular browsers have a similar function. In Google Chrome, it is known as Protect you and your device from dangerous websites. In earlier versions, it was Malware and Phishing protection. You can enable or disable it in the menu Advanced privacy and security. Sometimes you double-click on the program shortcut and the mouse pointer turns into a small spinning circle and then back into an arrow, while no application starts. In this case, start Task Manager. In the tab Processes, find all processes with the name of the program that cannot start. Select them one by one and click End Task. After that, the program that refused to run before should start all right. Many applications require administrators' rights in order to start. If you try to start or install a program and the system can't start uh, or informs that it cannot work without administrators' rights, try starting it as administrator. To do it, right-click on the program shortcut, select Run as administrator. If you want a program to be always started by administrator, right-click on the program shortcut, go to Properties – Compatibility, check the box Run this program as an administrator, then click Apply and OK. If you can't start a program or game that are not too new and were created some time ago, or if they refuse to start after you have migrated to a newer version of Windows, for example from Windows 7 to Windows 10, these problems can be caused by compatibility issues. In one of our videos, we were talking about running programs or games in compatibility mode. You will find the link in the description. Some programs require a net framework component to work properly. Some programs work with specific versions, while others just need the latest one. If your computer lacks such component or it is different from the version that a particular program requires, such program won't start and sometimes you won't be able even to install it. That is why read the program's requirements carefully. For example, Windows 10 comes with some components pre-installed, but they can be disabled. In order to find out, go to Control Panel – Programs and Features – Turn Windows Features on or off. Find Net Framework items in the list. Uh, make sure their boxes are checked. If they aren't, check them. After that, restart your computer and try running the faulty program once more. If you don't see any Net Framework items among Windows features, you can also install them on your own. They can be downloaded from the developer's website. You can find the link in the description. Microsoft Visual C++ is another important component required to install some programs and run them. Though latest Windows versions usually install necessary components automatically, some programs may have installation issues if they lack a certain Microsoft Visual C++ component. That is why an application may refuse to start or run properly if it lacks a specific Visual C++ component. You can download an up-to-date version of this component from the Microsoft website. Find the link to this page in the description. One of the possible reasons why computer games can't be installed or run is that your computer lacks the required or latest DirectX version. As in those previous cases, you can download an up-to-date version of this component from the Microsoft website. You can still find the link to this page in the description. Sometimes, when you try to run a game or program, you see a narrow message saying that you can't start them because of a missing DLL file. 
It happens because some game installers fail to install certain files completely. In this case, the missing DLL file has to be restored to enable the program to start. You can do it by using one of the many websites offering DLL files for download, or applications created to restore missing DLL libraries. I would like to remind you that we have not described all of the things that prevent a program from starting. We only try to focus on the most widespread program problems. If you like this video, click the like button below and subscribe to our channel to see more. We'll be glad to answer any questions and comments. Thank you for watching and good luck!